Grim Dawn is a beloved indie cult classic, but does it hold up in 2023? Should you check the game out, or will it feel too clunky and janky? Will it be just a little bit too rooted in nostalgia, and not quite playable? As someone who plays a lot of ARPGs, I get asked this quite often. And while I had played the game before, I felt like it was worth giving Grim Dawn a second look. If you're a time traveler from well beyond the year 2023, don't worry, I'm pretty sure the review's still going to be valid, because the game isn't going to change that much from here on out. And so, here are my thoughts on Grim Dawn, complete with the expansions, Ashes of Malmoth, Forgotten Gods, and of course the Crucible DLC. Right off the bat, Grim Dawn reminds me more of Titan Quest or Diablo 2, and there aren't many modern games like it. The closest thing I can think of is Last Epoch. It seems like these days, indie ARPGs tend to focus more on pixel graphics, probably because that's way easier to develop. And unlike a constantly changing live service, as far as I know, Grim Dawn is finished. It's a complete product, and you'll know what you're getting into before you start. But a lot of ARPGs have been coming out in 2023. So does this experience hold up? To find out, I grabbed the skill Eye of Dreeg and started blasting my way through every corner of a map. Because that's one of the best things about Grim Dawn. The exploration. Unlike a live service where you're incentivized to race to the end to get to max level, you can easily explore the journey in Grim Dawn more than the destination. There's plenty of little nooks and crannies to explore, hidden areas that you can easily miss, new enemies to fight, including some that are quite challenging, and of course, shrines of devotion to obtain those sweet skill points. You'll also get a series of choices throughout various quests which add some nice flavor. It's true that most of them boil down to kill or save, and the results don't seem to matter all that much in terms of the end of the game. However, it's still a nice touch, and honestly adds to the immersion. Of course, fighting hordes of monsters is one thing, but what about the scariest and most powerful enemies? How are the bosses? In this regard, Grim Dawn's boss fights aren't as complex as you'll find in a game like Path of Exile. You're not going to have to remember 30 mechanics, but they are solidly done, tuned very appropriately for your character's power level, and overall enjoyable especially because all of them have great narrative weight and impact. You're not just killing a guy in a gigantic meat suit. You're killing the Warden Krieg, because he's been making your life miserable for all of Chapter 1. And so now you need him dead. The same goes for Chapter 2, and of course beyond. But of course, dangerous bosses are one thing. What if they drop? There's a lot of loot to pick up in Grim Dawn. Gear is divided into three classes. Physique gear, cunning gear, and spirit gear. You can kind of think of this as your normal melee tank plate gear, your rogue leather chain stuff, and your caster cloth, which won't be as defensive, but often has great damage. Plus, looking at the resists page, you'll see there's a lot of them, so many that you might suffer severe emotional damage. To fix this, I suggest getting some emotional resistance as your first stat before opening the page. There are a lot of resistances in Grim Dawn, and there's also a lot of damage types. And unfortunately, as you progress, they will all matter, so balancing your stats can be quite a tricky ordeal, especially if you're just trying to play casually. Though, one thing that can definitely help is skills and constellations. These let you customize your character very easily. And many skills offer passive resistance bonuses. Certain constellations offer you resistance bonuses as well. And both of these systems are pretty forgiving. I found that clicking a lot of points into one skill, then grabbing constellations with that damage type, does work pretty well, which is why I had a poison slash acid eyeball launcher. If you have a lot of interest in my build, be sure to put it down in the comments below, and who knows, maybe I'll make a dedicated video on that. For now, suffice to say, I shoot eyeballs at stuff, eyeballs go boom, stuff goes boom, and I pick up the loot. There's a lot of stats, and a pretty good level of character customization. You get to combine two different base classes and mix and match their skills, though there are a few exclusive skills that can't be mixed or matched with anything else. They never really had any friends growing up, and don't play nice with others. When you start out, the constellation system is pretty limited, but as you clear more Shrines of Devotion, you'll have more and more points to play with, allowing for some very interesting levels of character customization, as a lot of constellations offer skill enhancements. You can think of these as skills which trigger when you use other skills, many of which can be quite potent. And you will have to go out of your way to find these Shrines of Devotion because Grim Dawn puts a big focus on side quests. If you haven't emptied your quest log, then there's more content to explore. Again, don't think of this like a race to max level. Think of it as a nice leisurely stroll where you get to enjoy the journey. The DLC also adds new areas, new ways to interact with enemies, 
new classes, and of course, more side quests. If you need a little bit of help, I'm going to be releasing a tips and tricks video with the things I've learned over my roughly 100 hours of playing Grim Dawn. One thing that you might have noticed from the gameplay that's very different from a lot of modern ARPGs. The game isn't very fast paced. It's engaging for your first playthrough, but personally, I often find myself losing interest by elite difficulty because the game's structure is you play through an either normal or veteran, with veteran being much harder enemies for a slight EXP bonus, then you play through an elite, and then you play through an ultimate and experience the end game. The thing is, I don't really want to experience what I've already done. I explored the areas, I completed the story, and I got that sense of closure. To do it again, and then now I have to do it a third time, just isn't really for me. Though it also gives you plenty more time to play with your build, so it could very well be for you. Also, as a small note, certain quests can be a little bit confusing, so you might want to have a wiki open on another monitor. Plus, if you want to play Grim Dawn even more, and you feel like you've already done everything, there's tons of community content including mods and fan-made seasons. In short, Grim Dawn is well-beloved for a reason, and if you're a huge fan of ARPGs, you should absolutely give it a shot. The game regularly goes on sale, or if you want to buy it right now, you can purchase it through my Nexus and also help to support the channel. The link will be down in the description below. As I said before, I've put over 100 hours into Grim Dawn, and I enjoyed the time spent playing. But for me, it's not a forever game. It's something that I play through, I experience the story, and then it's good. I move on to something else, and I experience a different world. I've played through the game three times on three different builds, and I've never quite made it past Elite. Because I realized, well, it is fun. It's fun to explore it, not to beat it. I'm not really interested in the grind or the endgame loop, since there's no economy for me to interact with, there's no insane crazy content for insane crazy builds. It's just a game. It'll be there next time I want to play, and that's A-OK. -okay. If I had any regrets, I certainly wouldn't have played through it three times. And hey, I'm sure there's going to be a time when I want to come back and try a completely different build. Maybe that'll be the one that finally gets me past the Elite Hump. Until then though, should you play Grim Dawn? Like I said before, if you're a big fan of ARPGs and you want to try something different, absolutely yes. Though if you're a big fan of ARPGs, I'm sure you've probably already played it. So if you maybe want to play something else that's similar, maybe check out my video on other ARPGs that I'd recommend. Or you could always check out Last Epoch, which is getting a huge patch early in 2023 and should finally be coming out of beta in the near future. 2023 is a year packed full of ARPGs, but most of them are live services that want you to do things all the time and forever. It's nice to have a game that will always be there, offers a solid amount of content, but doesn't keep making demands on your time. I do think Grim Dawn has earned its reputation as a cult classic. It's a well-built world with fun character customization, even if there's a few rough edges and flaws here and there. But hey, the world's pretty gritty, so you can't expect everything to be super clean. Personally, I think it would be nice if a pathing and targeting for melee skills was a little bit better. And if you could skip to ultimate difficulty, if you want to kill a thousand monsters a second, Grim Dawn is not the game for you. But if you want to have a game that's nice and comfy, it absolutely could be. And hey, if you want to keep beating the game and play well past the end, there is an endgame loop with extra content, including an arena mode to test your character's metal. So there really is a lot here for almost everyone. With that said, what other ARPGs do you think are absolutely critical for ARPG fans to play? And is Grim Dawn on that list? Be sure to let me know some of those thoughts down in the comments below. If you're interested in that tips and tricks video that I mentioned earlier, be sure to get subscribed, that should be coming out shortly. And while you're down there, leave a like to tell the YouTube algorithm to show this video to other people. Before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for the continued support. If you want something else to watch, maybe check out the other ARPGs I recommend. Video will be up in the card and down in the description, or click through YouTube's recommendation, which will be on screen right now. But that's all for me today. I hope you learned something, even if it's just that sometimes you have to make the best you can at the end of a world. And I hope to see you again sometime soon.